Since time immemorial, we've been a hunting and gathering society, and our livelihood was hugely dependent upon the salmon. Up and down the coast, the tribes lived along the waterways where the salmon were on their migratory journey from the ocean up the rivers to spawn and give new life. The old people knew this, so they prepared themselves to harvest the salmon in the most plentiful places that could be. They uh, traveled by canoe, and these canoes provided them with a means to become one with the waters and with the salmon and all living things. And when the newcomers came to this territory, that life way had changed dramatically. For some people, this area is just Washington and Oregon, Canada, and for us, it's a mixture of all that. We we never had borders. Borders are so chaos, they're so new. And it brought on and made me think of that movie, Lion King. Simba's dad is showing him his, his kingdom, his land, his omak tanoch. He was telling Simba that your land is as far as you can see, all the land that the sun touches and for for us, it's more of how far up that sacred path we can paddle. It's, we've been here for so long, it, it's just home. To me, the last great canoe journey occurred in 1855 when the tribes went to Mukilteo to sign the treaty with the newcomers, and they gave up the parts of their lifeway and moved to reservations. This act of assimilation took away a lot of culture of our people. Today it is being reborn through canoe journeys and these things that were once done in our culture, once were relied upon on the waters, are being recognized once again. There are so many feelings on the water. One, just to get in the canoe with your family in your ancestors' waters, um, singing a song that uh, a dear friend made for us when we had no songs, who came from the Lummi Nation, That always um, takes my breath away. Um, Sometimes when I don't have the strength, I'll just feel the breeze on my back and I I feel like that's that's the ancestors, just just letting me know to keep going. Her name is Nakuds Nulak Suwaida and Nakuds Nu is mother's heart. Suwaida is of the ocean, so mother's heart of the ocean. It's like gathering of you know, our native people. Chisukin's a chat chat sash, sashla, you know, following that sacred path. We do travel with many nations. I live in Seattle and, and I am of the Duwamish Nation and of the Lummi Nation. Um, the colonizers, they, they told us you are registered one nation, but when you move normally to another nation, then they take you in. It's it's not, I'm just Lummi, I'm just Quinault. Um, so it, it's, it's so important to be out on the water and see what it is like from the water and not from the highway. And to see the eagles above us and, and to have the youth out there experiencing that they'll carry this on with with their generations. As the dates grew near for the canoe families that were traveling from the different tribal communities were getting ready to leave, they thought to themselves, why am I going? Many of our youth were seeking identity. Many of our young ones are wanting to be on a healing journey that brings them back to who they really are. Many of our elders go on journey to witness 
Esprit Birth and to stand proud with how we survived the annihilation of our societies. And together they created a bond that made us realize that what we're doing today is a result of all those things that our ancestors tried to save for us in years past. Being on Canoe Journey is a healing. It's a healing for oneself, but most importantly, it's a healing and a prayer for those that are being left behind, those in your mind and your heart that you know are suffering. And you send those prayers with every stroke that you take, every breath that you take. And it's all good when you do this with one mind and you travel towards your destination. And so the journey begins and the paddlers take off from their village and their community to make their way to Lummi. And when they're on the water, they feel a certain spirit move over them, this feeling of being home, this understanding like this is the way it always used to be, this complete manner of being because now you're one with the water. You're one with the canoe highway that our ancestors traveled in search of food, in search of shelter, in search of new friendships. And that's merely what Canoe Journey is trying to relive today. The flotilla grew and grew as the weeks have passed, till finally when they landed at Lummi, there were over 104 canoes. This was the 30th anniversary of the canoe journeys, and it being a recent occurrence has become a way of life for a lot of our people in the Coast Salish territory. You know, when you're saying Salish, I think that's kind of, that's what we're talking about is the people around here that were in those canoes. All them tribes with the ish at the end. We're all family, we're all related. When you're saying Salish, that's kind of the idea I grasp. But also up and down the Pacific coast from as far north as Bella Bella and into Alaska and as far south as the Columbia River and the Columbia Indian tribes who prepare themselves throughout the year to come to tribal canoe journeys. They practice their song and dance. They prepare for the potlatch and they prepare to see old friends and make new friends. With Journeys, we have the opportunity to witness the growth of the language and culture through our children. I see the people following the sacred path that's been set out for them for generations since time immemorial. And I see them grabbing onto this sacred medicine and using it to the best of their ability. I see highly respected women not fearing this bad world, this scary world. I see these, you know, young men doing the best they can to be who they are. We are all just people and we're all trying to be, we're all trying to live, be happy, and, and seeing them be able to grasp onto things that were taken at one point is Sacheno, uh, Sacheno Smatsk, and you see the pride on their face. So here we are in 2019 on the 30th anniversary of Canoe Journeys. And the people recognize the strength that have been gained through Canoe Journeys, how it informs the work that we do with our children, how it preserves those things that were dear to our ancestors, the way we sing and dance and speak to each other with a good heart and a good mind. Leaders in our community gathered themselves, their families and their children to prepare practice, song, and ceremony for the giveaway 
the good minds and the good hearts made sure that there were places for the people to camp and to be fed and to ensure that the health and well-being of our elders were looked after and that also that when our people stepped onto the floor that everybody was welcome. When that day arrived and the canoes paddled into the shores of the Lummi Nation, they came to shore and they recognized the Lummi people and they asked the Lummi people if they could come to their shores and practice song and ceremony and the power of the giveaway with the Lummi people, asking if they can come to see their relatives once again and to recognize that these things that we're doing today had always been a big part of our way of life. We ride on the Wellington. I give all the glory to our Nooksack youth. They were our power that got, got us here today. And I, I, wanna, I wanna say it's an honor to be on Stamish grounds. So much tradition and culture has been shared here. I, I would like to share some of our songs and our culture with you. We humbly ask permission to come ashore to all my relatives. We thank you very much. Uh, thanks to the Lummi Nation for allowing us passage through your waterways. Uh, we would like to come to shore to share songs, to share dance, to share our good medicine with you. I'm here speaking for One People's Canoe Society who has members uh, from all over Alaska, both native and non-native. And we humbly request permission to come ashore so we may um, share in your festivities to sing and dance alongside you. On behalf of the Lummi Nation, we're so thankful that you're here. We're so thankful that you come here to share a meal, to share your songs, to share your dances, and to share your good feelings. We're so thankful that you're here. We want to invite you to come ashore. It is so important for our people to know that hosting Guru Journeys does something for all of the Lummi people, especially our children, who are experiencing this whole idea of becoming a Lummi that speaks the language, that practices the song of the dance of the old people, that learn the importance of giving, giving themselves and giving to others those things that come from the heart.
for me, canoe journey was more than just you know, modern day natives gathering and celebrating, bringing back that potluck. Cause I am, I've heard stories from my great grandmother on how all our regalia was literally ripped off and just thrown into the fire. So, you know, for Omak, for all of our people to gather and, you know, be able to wear that sacred regalia again, it brings some good feelings, some some sacred feelings, I guess you could say. It jolts medicine through my body almost, it feels like. Looking back at the last great canoe journey of our people, much was lost and today is being reborn, recaptured, if you will, this life way of living on the water, understanding what the water does for our people, giving us life for the salmon that we receive, giving us life for the songs that we receive, giving us life for the understanding that our ancestors lived along these shores and their spirit still lives today and our children are recognizing that very thing. RCM. CM Nes Jalata CM CM Na Elis Downu Nas Tleet Quenisquail Aqua Queen of Squal CM Ta Kachnin Ta Shwalakwa Eat Ta Al Lalo Tia Squachil Haichka CM Anuch Ait An Kachnin Tia Squachil CM Haichka CM Nequalia Nish and at Ta Huiwo Eat Hamasto An Quilila eats Dalila, Matamaqua, Tia Squachil, CM, 